There are places that our bodies know. The curve of the couch, the creak of the porch swing, the number of steps to our love's front door. There are places that our bodies know, and there are places that our souls know. Waiting rooms and sanctuaries, nurseries and bedrooms, open roads and dinner tables. These are the travel routes, the many destinations of a well-lived soul. And while my soul would prefer to stay in the sun, living on the front porch swings where life is easy, from time to time, we all find ourselves at grief's front door, in love's waiting room, or on the long and treacherous road to justice's house. So when you do, remember, your body can be in a familiar space while your soul can feel a long way from home. Go easy on your soul and your body. She's traveling. Being here has never been easy. So let us worship knowing that it's not easy. Let us worship well now. Grace and peace to you. And welcome to this Good Friday worship experience. My name is Bert Cloud. I'm the pastor here at St. Matthias United Methodist Church. On our altar, you can see one single candle. That's our altar table. It looks very bare from, from my perspective, probably yours as well. We gather uh, in this space and time to remember uh, the, the very hard moment of Jesus' gift for us. And I welcome you to this time. I want to remind you that we will be offering an in-person service tonight. Registration, I believe, is closed for that, but um, I want to remind you if you are, um, if uh, you are registered to please be with us tonight. We also have registration open still for our in-person worship gathering on Easter Sunday morning. That's at 11 a.m. And you can find registration information on our website, stmtoday.com. You can also um, find us online for an online Easter celebration at 9 a.m. on Sunday as well. I hope that you'll be able to join us in some way. Also on Saturday uh, at 7 p.m., we will have a special vigil service. It will not be a traditional overnight vigil, but we will have a vigil service uh, online um, on Facebook Live and YouTube. That will be at 7 uh, live, and then it will be on demand later on. So it is there for you to use. May God bless us in this time of worship. May we find ourselves reminded of things and renewed in some way, even as we come to remember this very heavy and solemn moment. So um, please know that there will be moments of silence and moments where you may offer a spoken response if you uh, feel that uh, you can do that, or you can offer responses silently within your heart as well. So God bless us all in this time.
They say a rooster crowing is God's wake-up call. Yeah, that's, uh, at least that's the way it was for me. Everything, that that whole night was a blur, all right? Um, I didn't comprehend, none of us could comprehend everything that was going on, all right? We were all in the upper room, Jesus was washing our feet. Um, Then we were in the garden, Jesus goes off to pray by himself. I fell asleep, I'm not proud of it, had a big meal. Bread makes me sleepy. Next thing we know, me, James, and John, Jesus is in our face, and he's trying to wake us up, and uh, he said, um, he said, uh, the the, uh, the flesh is weak, the spirit is willing, and and then before we know it, Judas is kissing Jesus on the cheek. I try to go help him. I cut off this guard's ear. For the record, I wasn't aiming for his ear. I'm a fisherman, not a swordsman. Then they, uh, they arrest Jesus, and they take him off, and we, we ran. And it wasn't but two hours earlier that we were in the upper room. I was looking at him. I was looking him right in the eye saying, if everyone disowns you, Jesus, I won't. I'm with you. I love you. And I think that's what made me stop, turn around, go back. And uh, I caught a glimpse of Jesus as they were taking him to the high priest's house. I stood at the gate, and some girl comes up to me, starts pointing at me, starts going, you, you're with him. You're with this man that claims to be the son of God. You're one of his disciples. I felt like every eye was on me. So I just brushed her off. I said, you don't know what you're talking about. You got the wrong guy. I get my way into the courtyard, and uh, it's cold. I, I try to warm up by the fire. And then there's this guy that recognizes me, and he is uh, from the ear incident, you know, and starts going, get him, get him, he's with him. Just arrest him, get him. And I'm like, you don't know what you're talking about, all right? I wasn't with him. It was easier the second time to deny him. It was some time right before morning, and um, this wise guy, he comes up to me and goes, who are you kidding, all right? Who are you fooling? You're with him. I can tell by your accent. I'm like, this is just the way I talk, all right? And, and the whole night, they kept pushing him around. They kept beating him. They kept spitting on him, throwing insults at him, and I couldn't take it anymore. I had enough. I was tired of people accusing me, looking at me, and I, and I just I said a few things that I'm not proud of, but I was like, leave him alone. You don't know what you're doing, all right? Just leave him alone. I wasn't with him.
And that's when I heard the most blood curdling sound I ever heard in my whole life. I heard that rooster crow. And at that moment, Jesus, he turns around and he looks at me. He looks at me. And his gaze, you can't escape his gaze. I mean, when his eyes are on you, you cannot escape it. And they arrested him and they took him off. I will die with you, Jesus. If, everyone, if everybody disowns you, I will die with you. What a, what a joke. I mean, what would you do? At that moment, at that time, I ran. I ran so fast, I ran so long. And you know what they did? They killed him. He's dead. If you've ever missed curfew, you know, that time that you needed to be in, that time that people were looking for you, if you've ever missed curfew, then you might have known the feeling of trying to sneak back in, tiptoeing past your parents' bedroom, maybe you carried your shoes, trying to stealthily move in, hoping that they didn't catch you. In many ways, we treat Good Friday the same way. Like a teenager trying to avoid curfew. We long to tiptoe past this painful day. We long to avoid the confrontations and hurt. We want to take off our shoes and slide right past the cross and Onward to the empty tomb. But you and I both know there is no resurrection without crucifixion. There are no flowers without the tomb, without the rain. There is no love without a little heartache. It's cliche. But this is the case. So in this moment, I want to invite you to join with me in a prayer of confession as we take the time to intentionally stand still right here, both our feet on, our ground, on the ground both feet planted right here and right now. I'll put words on the screen that we can use together, and then there will be a moment for you to offer silent prayers. Join me, if you can. Holy God, we admit that we struggle with this day. We struggle with Good Friday for three reasons. First, no one likes to see another suffer. On this day, we are face to face with the cross, and your suffering is hard for us to bear. Second, the pain of this day reminds us of the pain of past and present days, and our own pain is hard for us to bear. Third, we are reminded of the suffering we cast onto others, which means we have to confront the pain that we have caused you. So forgive us 
for skirting around the edges of this day. Forgive us for averting our eyes and avoiding the sinking feeling in our chests. Forgive us for distancing ourselves from the hurt and forgive us for the ways in which we add to the suffering of this world. We do not like to be here, a place of grief and despair at the foot of the cross, face to face with state-sanctioned violence. And yet, here is where we are, so forgive us and then use us for your good. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. Know now these words of forgiveness. Family of faith, even on this day, even at the foot of the cross, even here, even now, Christ is saying, forgive them. They know not what they do. We don't often feel that we deserve this grace, but we receive it nonetheless. Say these words aloud with me and trust that they belong to you. In my best and worst moments, I am a child of God. Nothing can separate me from that truth, not even death. Thanks be to God. Amen. And amen.
A reading from the Gospel of John. Then Pilate had Jesus taken and whipped. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and dressed him in a purple robe over and over. They went up to him and said, Greetings, King of the Jews, and they slapped him in the face. Pilate came out of the palace again and said to the Jewish leaders, Look, I'm bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no grounds for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is your man. Here's the man. When the chief priest and the deputies saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! And Pilate told them, you take him and crucify him. I, find, I don't find any grounds for a charge against him. The Jewish leaders replied, We have a law. According to this law, he ought to die because he made himself out to be God's son. When Pilate heard this word, he was even more afraid. He went back into the residence and spoke to Jesus. Where are you from? Jesus didn't answer. So Pilate said, You won't speak to me? Don't you know that I have the authority to release you and also to crucify you? Jesus replied, You would have no authority over me if it had not been given to you from above. That's why the one handed me over to you has the greater sin. From this moment on, Pilate wanted to release Jesus. However, the Jewish leaders cried out, saying, If you release this man, you're not a friend of the emperor. Anyone who makes himself out to be king opposes the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he led Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench at the palace called Stone Pavement in Aramaic, Gabbatha. It was about noon on the preparation day for the Passover, Pilate said to the Jewish leaders, Here is your king. The Jewish leaders cried out, Take him away! Take him away and crucify him! Pilate responded, What? Do you want me to crucify your king? We have no king except the emperor, the chief priest answered. Then Pilate handed Jesus over to be crucified. The soldiers took Jesus prisoner, Carrying his cross by himself, he went to a place called Skull Place in Aramaic, Golgotha. That's where they crucified him and two others with him, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a public notice written and posted on the cross. It said, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read the sign for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. Therefore, the Jewish chief priests complained to Pilate, Don't write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I've written, I've written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus... They took his clothes and his sandals, and they divided them into four shares, one for each soldier. His shirt was seamless, woven as one piece from the top to the bottom. They said to each other, let's not tear it, let's cast lots to see who will get it. This was to fulfill the scripture. They divided my clothes among themselves, and they cast lots for my clothing. That's what the soldiers did. Jesus' mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene, stood near the cross. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that time on, this disciple took her into his home. 
after this, knowing that everything had, was already completed in order for, to fulfill the scripture, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was nearby, so the soldiers soaked a sponge in it and placed it on a hyssop branch and held it to his lips. When he would receive the sour wine, Jesus said, It is completed. Bowing his head, he gave up his life.
on this day, we need to also hold into our heart the needs of others, just as Jesus did. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered his prayers with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. On this day, we pray in Jesus' name. We pray remembering the church. Lord, keep us faithful to the gospel, proclaiming the good news of salvation, even in the face of danger and death. O oh Lord, do not be far away. Come quickly to save us. On this day, we remember the world. Lord, rescue this perishing planet, condemned by human cruelty. Do not let it be destroyed forever. O oh Lord, do not be far away. Come quickly to help us. On this day, we remember all nations. Lord, break the sword and snap the spear. Trample the high walls and thorny fences that separate neighbors and nations. O oh Lord, do not be far away. Come quickly to save us. On this day, we remember those who face death. Restore the lives of those who suffer, God. Give hope to those who are despairing and welcome the dying into your arms. O oh Lord, do not be far away. Come quickly to help us. We ask these things in the name of Jesus, your suffering servant, our only hope and salvation. To end our time, I would like to offer a blessing written by Jan Richardson. Jan is a United Methodist pastor and uh, a remarkable artist and poet and friend. This is based upon Psalm 31, 12, I have become like a broken vessel. And it is also... Um, a good prayer for Holy Saturday. 
as we move from this remembrance, as we move through the power of memory of what has happened, this is an important opportunity to look forward. Do not despair. You hold the memory of what it was to be whole. It lives deep in your bones. It abides in your heart. That has been torn and mended a hundred times. It persists in your lungs that know the mystery of what it means to be full, to be empty, to be full again. I'm not asking you to give up your grip on the shards you clasp so close to you, but to wonder what it would be like for those jagged edges to meet each other in some new pattern that you have never imagined, that you have never dared to dream. Sisters and brothers, wherever you are, whatever time you are watching this, may you and I find that deepest peace that our heart still longs for. Go in peace. Go in peace.